emotionally, or spiritually, or any other matter, Father. We ask that you would look upon them and hold them in the palms of your hand. We pray, Lord, for the leaders of our country, from civic governments all the way up to the top governing body within our nation. Father, bless them, guide them in their decision making. And now, Lord, I pray a special blessing upon Pastor Felicia, a blessing of wisdom, a blessing of discernment, and a blessing of power. Uh, she soon will be opening your word and sharing the bread of life with us. For these things, we give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Oh, friends, do you love Jesus? I'm going to try this again. Because there's a song that I grew up singing that I'm, gonna, I'm guessing you don't know the song, so I'm using the lyrics. I need you to respond with the lyrics for those who know it. So let me go again. Oh, friends, do you love Jesus? Oh, yes, I love Jesus. Oh, so you know it. Are you sure you love Jesus? I'm sure I love and Jesus. And why do you closer. love Jesus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Because he for, oh, oh Jeremy wants me to sing it. I'm so so we're gonna sing it. Let's go together. It's not on the screen. Oh friends, do you love Jesus? Oh yes, I love Jesus. Are you sure you love Jesus? I'm sure I love Jesus. And why do you love Jesus? Yes, why I love Jesus. Because That was the warm-up, so now let's get into praise and worship. Our first song today is going to be, Oh, Worship the King, All Glorious Above. And then we're going to go straight into, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. Let's sing together, everyone.
And I, so people who sing, as in, you know, like how we're up here right now, we tend to say, do it with a straight face or seriously, because we're doing it with passion, right? But I, I, was, I was getting ready this morning and I looked in the mirror, Laura, and I thought to myself, we're gonna sing, He Has Made Me Glad. Randall, you need to smile. <laughs> because no matter how passionate you are about this song, you have to look like you are glad, amen? amen? When we sing, it should bring joy. Now, on another day when I come back to sing, if you see me looking serious, it's not because I'm sad, it's a passion that has come back. We're gonna not so <laughs> sing. Our next song is My Hope is Built on Nothing Less Than Jesus' Blood and Righteousness. just worship, but a relationship with God that demands that we rely on His power. Not our own, not our own abilities, not our own merits or talents, but solely by virtue of His power and the power of His love will we be able to continue to be faithful and to be a blessing to those around. So as we open our hearts and get ready for the rest of the service, may this uh, resonate with us and allow us to be pulled closer to Christ, not just this morning, but here onward.
So before we go any further, I have a question for you. And it's the same question that our praise team posed at the very beginning of their praise. And I want you to respond. Oh, friend, do you love Jesus? One more time. Friend, do you love Jesus? Yes, we love Jesus. Yes, we love Jesus. We've come to the time of our worship service where we can recognize and model Jesus' generosity to us. We are at a time where we'll be considering the Christ the Way Church budget. And the budget, as I've grown to understand, is much, much more than lights and heat and, and movement of air and so forth. These are wonderful things. We need them. But I'd like you just for a second to consider the concept of ministries. One thing that was an eye-opener to me just not too long ago is the number and the depth and the seriousness of the ministries that this church has to offer. Ministries, by and large, are prepared and done by volunteers, but despite that, there is cost to them. So let us consider that as our deacons will come to receive the Lord's tithes and your free will offerings. I would remind those who are joining us online, obviously you are not able to uh, participate in the manual giving of, of the offering. Uh, there are online opportunities. And on the screen, you will have the information that you require. Let us bow our heads. Father God in heaven, you have emptied heaven for us. Father, our gratitude would overflow. Our thanks would be unceasing. Lord, as we consider what you've done for us, help us consider what meager and yet meaningful offering we can bring to you. Ourselves, our broken spirits and our contrite hearts, and our monetary gifts in Jesus' name. I ask that you would bless them. Amen. Sabbath, everyone. It's so wonderful to see your lovely faces again. Um, I am here to remind you of some important um, pieces of information or events that are coming up um, or ongoing in our church. And uh, the first of them is to update you that our roof repair fund is chugging along nicely. 
um, I just like you to rem to remind you that our goal is to raise fifty thousand dollars to cover the cost of some very necessary repairs that had to be undertaken on our church roof. At present, we have raised $17,810, and that's not including money that was just donated. So we are going along, and we just encourage you, we thank you for your giving, and encourage you to continue to support this very important endeavor. Then, coming up in uh, two weeks, our Pathfinders are going to be hosting uh, uh, movie night right here at church, and they are going to be showing a movie that is called The Secret of the Fossil. And um, that promises to be a really exciting, um, you know, uh, presentation. And they're doing this to raise funds for the Pathfinders uh, going to Campery 2024. So we encourage everyone to come out on February 17th. Uh, the Pathfinders are asking you to contribute $10 to enter and watch the screening of this uh, film. And then afterwards, they're going to have refreshments on sale. And just so you have a taste of what you will be treated to on the 17th, we're going to ask the AV team to show you a trailer of this movie that you'll be seeing on February 17th. far would you go? To uncover the truth. Secret of the Fossil. Indeed, that looks exciting, doesn't it? So please come out, uh, support our Pathfinders on February 17th at 6.30. And also on February 17th, there's another really exciting affair that's going to be on. So in, uh, at lunchtime for our fellowship lunch, we are going to be having tri-cultural cuisine, right? So we're going to be having a fusion of Caribbean, Ukrainian, and African food. Doesn't that sound exciting? Man, I can't wait for the 17th, right? So we are encouraging everybody to participate, all right? No matter what your cultural background is, please uh, contribute an item. And not only that, but it's a great day to invite your friends to come to church, right, so that they can experience uh, the wonderful delicacies that we'll be serving from all corners of the world. So that's on February 17th um, for our potluck lunch. I'd like to change gears a bit now and bring to your attention some uh, events that the pastors and elders would like you to pay particularly keen attention to. And the first of those is that on February 24, we have one of the most important events that a church can have, and that is a baptism. So people in a few weeks are going to be surrendering their hearts to God in baptism, right? And we want you to know that if you are listening online or you are here in person and you are considering to give your heart to Christ, that there is still an opportunity to do so, to join uh, with your fellow believers on February 24 in baptism. And to do so, all you have to do is to reach out to one of our pastors or our elders, let them know that you are considering baptism, and they will be more than willing to take you through the process. So please um, bear that in mind. Uh, also, this afternoon at 5 p.m. or per 
per ministries team will be hosting a program that is going to help us to transition our prayers from being self-centered to being more God-centered. So this evening at 5 p.m., we encourage you to come out. There will be a presentation, opportunities to discuss and to engage um, as to how we can move from praying self-centered prayers to God-centered prayers. <clears throat> and uh, keeping in the theme of prayer, uh, the uh, Alberta Conference will be hosting right at our church here a prayer conference next week, Friday and Sabbath. Right, So Friday evening at 7 p.m. and Sabbath at 10 a.m., we are going to be having a prayer conference right here at our church. So brethren from all across Edmonton will be converging here at Christ the Way. We're having a speaker come in, Pastor Wallen O'Connor, and his uh, aim is going to help us to jumpstart our prayer journey with Jesus. So we're encouraging everyone to come out to support the program. Remember, Friday evening at 7 p.m. on the 9th, and then Sabbath or regular church time. In addition to the prayer conference, uh, we are being asked to bring along a special donation. So they're asking for people to take along a brand new or a gently used backpack. And the reason for this is that they want to make gifts to those who are in need, you know, persons who sometimes do not have a, a roof over their head. You know, they have to move around with their belongings. And your gift of a backpack is going to be very, very helpful um, to make their lives a little bit more comfortable. So we encourage you to bear that in mind and um, show up and show up with a love gift. So these are our announcements um, for today, and I encourage you to keep them in mind. Pay attention to your bulletin and have a wonderful Sabbath. God bless you. Good morning, boys and girls. Good morning. Good to see every one of you here, and I love your smiles. Oriel, can you see me? <laughs> Good morning, bigger boys and girls. Good morning. Good. All right. So it's beautiful weather out there, isn't it? Did you guys do some fun things out uh, yeah. in the past week? Oh, that's good. I see hands up. I see hands up. All right. That's nice. Today, this morning, I'm going to tell you a story about a little girl and her family who stayed on a big college campus. Okay? And, um, oh, if you look up the screen. So that's the campus. You see many, many buildings there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, that's the setting of our story, okay? And um, this little girl, she was five going to six, and she had two little brothers. She stayed with her mom, her dad, and her auntie. And, um, okay, and dad and mommy would drive to work, um, there is the home, that's where they used to stay, and they would, dad would drive all the way to the office, all right? Or sometimes dad or mommy would just walk from home to the office. So this is a big campus, and you have thousands of students any given day who are walking about campus. 
This little girl loved to spend some time in her dad's office. And on Sundays, sometimes daddy had to catch up with work and she would say, can I take along? And sure enough, daddy would say, let's go. And guess what she would be doing in the office whilst daddy was working? What would she be? Oh, do we have a mic? Do we have a mic? Yes. Can you give it to her? <clears throat> She'll be playing in the office. Playing in the office. What else do you think she'll be doing? Give it to Fari. She'll be playing with toys. Yes, yes. It's one of those things that she used to do. Okay, Faro? Um, I thought, I think she, she was watching. Watching? What could she be watching? She could be drawing. Drawing? That's another thing, yeah. Waiting till her dad is finished working. Exactly. All right. So um, she loved watching cartoons on the computer. So every time daddy busy working, she would be watching, having fun. And when daddy is done, they would then walk back home or drive back home. And daddy thought maybe she would challenge his little girl. He would challenge his little girl. So he said the other time, if you want to come along, I'm not coming home for lunch. You're going to find your way to the office. All the way from home to the office. Hmm. That's challenging, right? It's a bit of a long walk and it's a big campus, and you have many students who are walking about. Now, I'll tell you that former students, some staff would get lost around campus as they tried to find their way. But he thought it would be a good challenge because they had done uh, the journey a few times together. And she said, yes, so tomorrow, after lunch, she was going to come to the office on her own. And so, Daddy made a plan. So he spoke to her auntie, this little girl's auntie, and said, can you escort her past the open fields, <laughs> leave her somewhere close to the banking hall, and then she would make the rest of the journey on her own, okay? And the little girl didn't know that there was a plan that Daddy had made. And so the following morning, sure enough, auntie called, I'm now coming with the little girl, I'll leave her by the banking hall, and she'll make the rest of the journey on her own. Meanwhile, daddy walked back, he was going to be watching and following behind his little girl as she made her way to the office, okay? So she thought she was on her own, but daddy was right behind her, ducking and hiding behind people as she made her way to the office. So come along with me. She is by the banking hall, right behind. Daddy is watching and following behind. I can see her. There she goes, past um, a few buildings. She gets to a busy road. She stops, checks left, right, left, crosses the road. And as soon as she does that, she's now by the students' union building <clears throat> where you have many, many people walking about. And these two, three girls who are walking along the same path, they see this little girl, she's making her way, and they greeted her. And she greeted back, you know, how are you? What's your name? She says out her name, and then, where are you going? Because it's unusual to find a little girl walking along this, this uh, uh, busy part of campus. And she says, I'm going to my daddy's office. Do you know your dad's office where it is? And she said, yes, I do. And off she runs. And she goes past a big lecture theater where people are streaming out after a lecture. And all the way she goes, and Dad is behind, and he's watching, and now she's almost close to the office, but she has to go past the bioassay lab, 
Anybody who's been in a lab? Yeah? Yeah? Yes. Yes, it counts. So you have been there. But this lab keeps live animals. So at any point, you can hear dogs. You can hear uh, sheep bleating. You can hear goats. But she doesn't mind. She's making her way up a small flight of stairs. She makes a right turn. And just as she was about to get to her daddy's office, she hears someone from behind shouting, well done, Mumu, well done, Mufaru, you made it, you made it. And, you know, she's looking behind her and she says, Daddy, where are you coming from? And he says, I was with you all along, all the way from when you were left by Auntie by the banking hall up to this point. And by this time, her mom is also there and they are all shouting, lifting her up and saying, well done, Mufari, you made it. You made it all the way home to the office all on your own. Right. I want us to put on our thinking caps right now. Who represents God in this story? Tell me who and why. Okay, who represents God in this story? Tell me who and why. Um, Sarah? Can, can you give her? Good. Mufaro? Mufaro? Why do you think Mufaro represents God in this story? Okay, whilst you're thinking about that, can you give to Bomi and Abomi? Who do you think represents God in this story? Uh, the dad, because he was watching over Mufaro, making sure that she wouldn't get hurt. Right, right. So, I would think God is represented by the dead in this story because he's watching over his little girl, making sure that nothing happens to her. And who does Mufaro represent in this story? Can you give her the mic? <clears throat> Because Mufara, because she, um, actually, because, because she has to be healthy. Yes. So Mufara represents all of God's children. And God cares and he's looking out to make sure that we are okay. So we have one verse that I want to read. Um, and then we're going to have two volunteers pray for us. The verse is coming from, okay, you're one of those who's going to pray. Psalm 121, verses 7 and 8, and it says, The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. So this is our God. He is confident in us. And not only is he confident in us, he also makes sure that he is right beside us, very close to us as we do everything on a daily basis. Isn't he a wonderful God? Yes. Yes, yes he is. So we're going to have two volunteers pray, okay, Tiwi and uh, her. Let us close our eyes in prayer. Dear God, thank you for all of you have done for us. Bless us while we have a wonderful Sabbath. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Tiwi? Yeah. Thank you for this day. Thank you for calling and I think you can take care of Thank you for us all this day. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Good job, everyone. Have a wonderful, wonderful Sabbath. We can go back to our seats. While the young children are making their way back to where they're going to be seated, is there anybody in the house here that is appreciative of these youngsters and the energy and the love that they have for Jesus? Anybody at all? Amen. Amen. Now, 
one other question. I, I know I'm supposed to be doing announcements, but one other question I'd like to ask. Does anybody re remember the name of the movie that the Pathfinders will be uh, premiering here in the next little while? What's the name of it? The Secret of the Fossil. So young people, while a few of you are still here, as we interchange, thanks guys, as we interchange in the foyer, thinking about the secret of the fossil, I would like to assure you that neither Brother Berkeley or I have any secrets. I will leave it at that. We have three introductions that it gives me great pleasure to make. And I shall make the introduction in sequence of their coming to stage and praising the Lord with us. Our scripture reading this morning will be given by Nabobi Mlambo. Special music will be presented by Joemi Joseph. I asked Joemi whether he was playing today or whether he was singing today. Because you see, he can do all of that stuff. He says he will be singing today. And last but certainly not least, I would like to share with you an introduction of Pastor Felicia Williams. Now, most of us, both online and here, are familiar with Pastor Felicia. But I'd like to share something just a bit interesting. Does anybody know what Felicia means? What does the name Felicia mean? It means great happiness. Not ordinary happiness, but great happiness. So those of you who have become a little bit more familiar with Pastor Felicia, you know her happiness is in, the, in the Lord isn't average happiness. It's great happiness in the Lord. So there's why you got your name. And what else does Felicia mean? It means fortunate. We are indeed blessed and fortunate to have Pastor Felicia with us as our associate pastor. We're grateful to the Lord for bringing her here. She will be speaking today I speak of Jesus. Hello. I may now ask the congregation to stand for the scripture reading. Acts 4, verse 14, New King James Version. And seeing the man who had been healing standing with them, they could say nothing against it. You may now be seated. Happy Sabbath, church. Okay, I can count there are more than 100 people here, so I expect a better response. Happy Sabbath, church. That's more like it. How do you feel today? I feel good, not because I am good, which I am, but uh, it's a very special day for me. Uh, today, that was uh, on February 3rd, 1996. I was submerged under the baptismal water. So today is my rebirth day. And just two days ago was my birthday. And in about uh, 10 days will be my marriage anniversary. So it seems like February is Jomi's month. I think it's safe if I ever die on February, hopefully not this year, that they can change the Black History Month to Jomi History Month. Because I would have done every major event in my life in February. So I chose to sing the song I'm singing today because I was only 12, heading to 13 years old, when uh, a pastor who later became my Greek teacher in the Faculty of Theology, he was uh, preaching a conference at my church on Revelation. And my whole life, having grown up in the church, my dad has always been an elder, still is, so is my mom. 
I had never felt such an appeal that led me to baptism. My father never in a single moment suggested that I got baptized. Neither did my mom. So they let me feel it. And as I felt that appeal, I feel like I want to share that appeal that I felt back then again with you through this song that I'm going to be singing this morning. May God bless you and may you enjoy the beautiful words of this song. And if anyone hasn't made peace with Jesus yet, I really invite you to pay attention to the words of this song and make up your mind for Christ this morning. Jesus is standing in Pilate's hall. Fred was forsaken, betrayed by all. Again, what meaneth the sudden call? What will you do with Jesus? Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, everyone. What will you do with Jesus? It's a very important question for us to consider this morning. 
I am just uh, I'm grateful I'm grateful that I can stand before you in this moment and the reason one of the reasons why I'm grateful is because God brought me through this week I don't know about you but this week was trying but what is amazing is that for every trial God came through I'm reminded that the Lord says when the enemy comes in like a flood he will do what he will raise up a standard against him and so today, I just want to praise the Lord. I don't know, but, but I just brought praise for Jesus today. That he brought us through. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, God, that you would have seen it fit to bring us to this, your house of worship. We do not take it for granted, Lord. We do not take you for granted. And I pray, Father, that you will help us to set aside, lay aside every weight, every burden, and just to come to you. Because you said, Lord, your yoke is easy and your burden is light. So may we come this morning emptying ourselves of everything that will keep us from you and fill us with your spirit now in the name of Jesus. Lord, may Pentecost happen here today. May every one of us be in one accord knowing that we came to worship, we came to praise, we came to magnify Jesus. Show up, God, and show off. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Today, I want to speak with us briefly on the topic, I speak Jesus. You know, we are reviewing or going through the book of Acts and I hope that I hope that we have been reading last week Pastor Tufi would have gone through Acts 2 and when he comes back he will be continuing in Acts 2, but just today I want us to switch our focus to Acts chapters 3 and 4. In Acts 2, in Acts 2, we would have read about the Pentecost. On the day of Pentecost, when the disciples received the Holy Spirit, the major sign or manifestation of the Spirit was what? Do we remember what happened when the Spirit came down on the apostles in Acts 2 verses, I think, 1 and 2? What, what did we see happening? They did what? I'm hearing a little bit of whisper. They spoke in tongues. They spoke about Jesus in other languages, so much so that everyone who was there, as a matter of fact, there were people from about 13 or 14 different dialects, different languages, and they heard the apostles, the disciples, men and women speak Jesus in their languages. But this was only the beginning. 
This was only the beginning. You see, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we will not only speak in tongues. And I want to just interject here that I'm not talking about babbling. I'm talking about the infilling of the Spirit where you are empowered to speak in a language that edifies. I've, I've, I, I don't know if you've heard, I've heard of evangelists who would go to, let's say, a Spanish country, a Spanish-speaking country, and they, they're meant to present their uh, sermon and have a translator. And I, I remember meeting one guy who told me that the translator did not turn up, and he was left to preach his sermon either preach in English and maybe, you know, hopefully one or two people would understand or learn Spanish in about two hours. But what happened is that the Holy Spirit was poured out on him and that night, somehow, he preached and everyone understood him in Spanish. That's the kind of tongues that we are talking about. You see, the, the apostles and the disciples were on fire for Jesus. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit descended, descended on them like tongues of fire. And there are two reasons why we have this imagery. The first one, God used tongues. He used tongues because he was about to empower the apostles to preach the word and to speak the word. Now, I, I, know, I know it may sound like I'm saying the same thing. We are called to preach the good news of the gospel, but we're also called to speak Jesus, who is the word. Because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the Word was God. And yea, I would say the Word is still God. Amen? So, so the tongues signified that the apostles would be preaching the Word, and they would be speaking the Word. The, the second imagery was fire, fire. Why did God choose to manifest himself like tongues of fire. Why fire? Turn your Bibles with me to Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 9. We know about, uh, We hopefully we know about Jeremiah the prophet who had told God that he, he couldn't speak. He's not, he's only a child and couldn't uh, uh, preach. But then when God gave him his words and, and Jeremiah was upset that they were persecuting him, Jeremiah wanted to stop preaching the word. He wanted to stop speaking the word. But this is what happened. Jeremiah said in chapter 20, verse 9, Then I said, I will not do what? I will not make mention, I'm in the New King James Version, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name, but his word, and I dare say the word, Jesus, was in my heart like a burning fire, shut up in my bones. I was weary of holding it back. And I could not. I could not. Hebrews chapter 4, the book of Hebrews, if you quickly jump over there with me. Hebrews chapter 4, verse The book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says, For the word of God is living and powerful. And we're not just talking about the word as in the Bible. We're also 
yea, talking about Jesus the Word, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. I want to just pick on one word that we found in this verse, the word marrow. Do we know what marrow is? Yes? It's, it's that thing that's inside our bones, and this is where the, the red blood cells, all our blood cells are produced in our marrow. And Jeremiah was saying that the Word of God was like fire shut up. In his bones, in his very marrow, Jesus, who is the Word, was like fire shut up in his bones. So now that we understand the power of the Word, we're going to just take a look at Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. Now, In this chapter, we're not going to read through the chapter, but I I just want to highlight what happened. Peter and John, verse 1 says, Peter and John were going to the temple at the hour to pray. And there was a man there who was lame from his mother's womb. The Bible further stated that he was over 40 years. So imagine, for over 40 years, this man did not know what it was like to walk. He saw Peter and John, verse 3. And he proceeded to ask them for money. In verse 6, Peter said, silver... And gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now what what Peter would have done would be to heal this man in the name of Jesus whom the council, the, 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 the priests, and all of these other, uh, the Sanhedrin, whatever they were called, they were against this very Jesus. It is, yea, Jesus whom they would have crucified. And here we find Peter healing this man in the name of Jesus. And so in chapter 4, in chapter 4, they would have arrested Peter and John. Not because he did a good deed, but because he would have healed this man in another name. If we had the time, I would take us to Deuteronomy because there is a law that would have prevented any Jew to, 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 to prophesy, not to prophesy, but to speak of another name. There was a law that would mean you would need to be put to death. If you come with false prophets, prophecies, and and, and are speaking of other gods. So Peter and John were arrested under this law. And so we find that the council in chapter 4, in verse 5, it says, It came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders, scribes, as well as Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, all of them. Verse 4, it says that they were, in verse 6, sorry, they were gathered together at Jerusalem. And they asked, when they set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? Can can you see the flow of the story? Can you see how things are being set up here for Peter to speak Jesus? Can anybody see that? I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. In verse 8, it says, Then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit. Is this the same Spirit that we found in chapter 2? 
Yes, the same Spirit that descended on them with tongues of fire descended on Peter. And Peter was now filled with the Spirit. Because when you are going to speak Jesus, you need the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you have no power. As a matter of fact, you have no authority to speak Jesus without the Holy Spirit. So Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. And he said, listen, rulers, rulers of the people and elders of Israel, verse 9, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this Man stands here before you whole. Peter was told to stop speaking the name of Jesus. Peter was told, because when they realized that they, they really didn't have much to keep him in prison or keep them in prison on. They said, you know what, listen, listen, you just need to stop speaking the name of Jesus. Stop preaching in this name. But I just want to jump to chapter, uh, to, to, to verse 20 in chapter 4. When they said that to Peter and John, verse 19, let's, let's just go to verse 19. Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you be the judge. For we cannot, <laughs> for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. You see, the council told them to stop speaking the name of Jesus, but Peter said we cannot but speak. In other words, the word of God, Jesus, was in Peter like fire, shut up in his bones. And Peter says, I cannot withstand it. I cannot contain it. I will not stop it. I will not stop speaking the name of Jesus. I feel like I need to ask this question. If you were called on today to stop being a Christian, to stop speaking the name of Jesus, or else you will die, what would you do? Think on these things. What would you do? You see, because the Holy Spirit was in Peter, was empowering Peter. Peter did not, like he no longer cared about his life. I, I don't know if we've, we've noticed all the apostles, they preached the word of God. They preached Jesus in spite of the fact that they were beaten, arrested, the fact that they had friends who were martyred, they continued to speak Jesus. Did we ever notice that? They, they, they went through trials and tribulations that make what we're going through now like child's play. And, and I, I'm preaching to myself because I find that sometimes we're going through stuff and we're like, God, where are you? What is going on? When, when we really check it out, when we really look at it, in light of what the apostles have gone through, it's nothing. We have yet to be beaten. Forty stripes sometimes. We have yet to be crucified. Yes, 
Some of the apostles were crucified. We have yet to be stoned. Have mercy, Jesus. You know, there, there's a chorus in Jamaica. Uh, some Jamaicans would, would sing this song at church. I feel like the fire shut up. Does anybody know that song? I feel like the fire shut up in my bones. Have you ever heard that song? I feel like the fire shut up in my bones. Singing glory, hallelujah. I feel like the fire shut up in my bones. That's what was happening with Peter. The fire of God was shut up in his bones and no counsel, no counsel on earth could get him to stop speaking Jesus. You see, the man, the man that Peter had, had healed, I just want to bring us back to chapter 3, and, and bear with me because, you see, I asked the Lord this week that I would not preach what I want, but that he would have me preach what he wants. Let us look at Acts chapter 3 again. After the lame man was healed, there is something that happened. In verse 6, we see that Peter said to him, silver and gold I do not have. And then he says, in the name of Jesus. So Peter spoke Jesus over the lame man. In verse 7, and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And this is what happened. This is what happened. He was leaping. As a matter of fact, he leapt up and he stood up and he walked. But he didn't just walk. The Bible said he was walking and leaping and praising God. I want to submit to you today that if anybody speaks Jesus over you, you cannot just walk. You have to jump up. You have to be running around. You have to be praising God. That's what happened to this man. When he received the healing through the name of Jesus, he walked. No, he decided, I got to run because this fire is just shut up in my bones and I have to praise God. The song says, singing glory, hallelujah, because I feel like the fire is shut up in my bones. I, I, I want to, I want to bring it home. I want to bring it home to us here today. I have a tendency to read the stories in the Bible. And then I say, Lord, how does that relate to me now? How does that relate to our situation now? Peter said, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I sat this week and I was thinking, Lord, if Peter said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk, why is it that we have sick among us and we cannot say, in the name of Jesus, be healed? Have you ever thought about that? Why is it that we will have, uh, uh, you know, someone call us as pastors or elders and we'll go to their houses and we'll sing songs, we'll read psalms, we'll pray sometimes for hours and maybe, just maybe, they will get some relief. Maybe if we're lucky, they'll be healed. Why is it that all Peter needed to say was in the name of of Jesus. 
Rise up and walk. I dare say that we are missing the key component. I said earlier that in order for you to speak the name of Jesus with authority, you need what? The Holy Spirit. You need the infilling of the Holy Spirit. So maybe what we are missing is that we are yet to ask God to fill us with his spirit. Maybe what we are missing is that we are yet to allow ourselves to be ready for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Jesus did say to his disciples that this power comes through what? Prayer and fasting. Most of the times when we pray and we fast, we're asking God for a car. We're asking God for rent. We're asking God for food. We are not praying and fasting for the Holy Spirit. We're not praying and fasting for the Spirit of God to fall on us and to fill us so that when we are called on to speak Jesus, we can do so in faith and with power. Yes. And yes, people will be healed. Yes. <laughs> okay, this is, this is not mainstream Adventism. We, we tend not to focus on healing and deliverance. I, I grew up Adventist, fifth generation, if there's any clout in that. And I can tell you that... <laughs> Help me, Lord. It is time for us to tune in to the power of the Holy Spirit and the power that can only be found in the name of Jesus. It is time. We are living in the last days. You see, I, I, I'm... This is not on my script, and I notice that God is doing what he wants to do right now, and I'm happy because most times I'm confined to my script, what I would have thought God wanted me to say as I wrote the sermon. But this morning, I feel that we need to be reminded that God wants to pour out the latter rain on us, but we are not ready. We have to go higher. We have to stop praying for things of this world and pray for the Holy Spirit to fill us. God said, Jesus himself said, that if you ask for the Spirit, I will give him to you. I am challenging us today that after we leave here, our prayers will not be the same. We will seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, knowing that everything else that we need will be added, and ask the Lord to fill us with his spirit. Amen? You see, we need to rise up and walk. Rise up and walk into this newness of experiencing the power in the name of Jesus. We need to rise up and walk away from fear. We need to rise up and walk away from doubt. Peter had no fear. He had no doubt he knew when he spoke the name of Jesus over the lame man, he would get up and walk. He didn't pray, Lord, um, if it is your will, uh, maybe you can, you know, just, just, just restore some of his limbs. Peter declared with authority, rise up and walk. We need to rise up and walk away from self 
pity. A lot of us wallow in self-pity. We, 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 we see our conditions. We see the things we're going through. And instead of declaring the power of God, we wallow in our self-pity. We need to rise up in the name of Jesus and walk away from self-pity. We need to rise up and walk away from self-righteousness. There is no power in you. As a matter of fact, let's turn to Acts 4 verse 12. It says, nor, nor is there salvation. Nor is there salvation in any other. There's no salvation in you. There's no righteousness in you. Uh, uh, the Bible says, for there is what? No other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. No other name, no other righteousness, no other salvation can be found outside of Jesus. We need to rise up and walk away from our form of godliness. We need to rise up and walk away from sin. And we don't talk about sin much in the church anymore. Because everybody's just comfortable living in their sin. Because where sin abound, grace does much more abound. But the same Paul had said, then should we continue in sin so grace could continue to abound? We need to rise up and walk away from our sin. I want us today to experience the power of God. No, let me, let me fix that. God wants us today to experience his power. And, 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 and I'm not yet at the appeal, but I want to prepare your hearts from now. I want you to start talking to God right now and say, Lord, prepare me for your power. Prepare me for your filling. Prepare me so that I will receive your Holy Spirit so that when time comes for me to speak your name, I will do so without fear, without doubt, and without self. Have you ever experienced the healing? I know my mom has, and maybe one day she will be able to share her story. Have you ever experienced, when I say healing, I, I don't mean like you went to the doctor and they gave you something and, you know, you felt better. I mean, literally, God moving through your body and you knew it was God and you were healed. Has, has anybody ever, ever experienced that? We, we cannot keep that quiet. We, we cannot keep that quiet. We, we have to share that God is still in the business of healing. So if you've ever experienced healing in the name of Jesus, I'm expecting that maybe come next week, we'll have like five people lined up here trying to share the, their story. Yes? That's what church should be. We should be sharing what God is doing in our lives. We should not just be sharing, but experiencing, being willing to share, and being willing to go higher. Because here's the thing about Jesus, and what we probably didn't realize with this lame man, this man didn't just receive physical healing. If he had just received physical healing, I believe he would have just got up, took up his little bed, and walked home. This man received what we can only receive in Jesus. We just read it in chapter, uh, verse 12. Salvation. The very name Jesus, Yeshua, is salvation. It means God is my Savior. God saves. Jesus 
saves. When you receive the healing of Jesus, you are not just new physically, you are new spiritually. A new creature has been born. A new creature has been formed when you receive Jesus in your life. When you receive the power that is found in the name of Jesus, you become new and you receive his salvation. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. There is salvation in the name of Jesus. Today, I want to just bring it home. I'm coming down. I don't want to keep us longer than we need to. Jesus is calling us today to speak his name. Your hearts are being prepared. I'm going to invite you to come to the altar in faith only as you are led by the Holy Spirit. I'm not the kind of pastor that believe you should beg and, and, you know, just labor. There's one more person. If the Holy Spirit leads you, you will come. I'm going to invite you to stand with me, and we are going to declare the name of Jesus. Please stand with me. We're going to speak Jesus over our infirmities. We're going to speak Jesus over illnesses. We're going to speak Jesus because every stronghold will break at the name of Jesus. We're going to speak Jesus over depression. We're going to speak Jesus over oppression. We're going to speak Jesus over addiction. Yes, he is powerful. His name is powerful to break addictions. We are going to speak Jesus today. We're going to speak Jesus over our families, He's, especially the ones who are not here. When I say not here, I mean those who are not of the fold. We're going to speak and declare Jesus today over them. Call their names and speak Jesus over them. We're going to speak Jesus even over our enemies. Yes. We're going to speak Jesus because at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue must confess that he is Lord. As I sing this song, as I sing this song, you may know it. It will be on the screen. I'm going to invite you to come forward as you're led by the Holy Spirit in faith, speaking Jesus over your lives and claiming healing and everything else that you need, including salvation, in the name of Jesus. Please come as you are led.
to every soul had captive by depression. I speak Jesus. Come on, church. Cause your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every strong. Here's the command. Here's the command. Shout Jesus from the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name. Jesus. Oh. Your name is power. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Just break down every stronghold. Break down the stronghold, Jesus, and shine through the shadows and burn like the fire. We just need the Holy Ghost fire to come here. Cause I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind You see, I know there is peace within his presence I speak Jesus We're just going to take a moment right now to just speak Jesus you're going to call out what it is you're struggling with and you're just going to speak Jesus. We're going to shout the name of Jesus over infirmities, over depression, over suicidal thoughts, over cancer. Yes, hallelujah. We're going to shout the name of Jesus over every enemy. And Jesus for our family. Let's speak the name of Jesus.
knowing there is salvation in the name of of Jesus. Lord, we, we didn't come here today to speak any other name but the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray that you will pour out your spirit up on us today. Father, we need to feel you. We need to be filled by you. May none of us leave here today the same way that we came. May we walk through these doors knowing that there is power in your name. And so in every situation that we will face tonight, tomorrow, next week, we will speak the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you, O oh God, because you are almighty. You are omnipotent. Father, you are the alpha, the omega. You are everything in between. And so, Lord, we bless you. We thank you. May you help us, Lord. As a matter of fact, just seal us even now for the day when you will come. And that final time when we will say, Jesus, it is because we will be looking at your face. What a day that will be when we will say, Jesus, you are our God and we've longed for you. We've groaned for you because of the pain and the anguish that we would have been through on this earth. What a day. Hallelujah. That will be when we will say, Jesus. Jesus, you are my Savior. You are my Redeemer. God, there's somebody here today. There's somebody here today who has never spoken your name with power. There's somebody here today who needs to find salvation in your name. May you lead them through the Holy Spirit to the watery grave of baptism. May they no longer resist your Holy Spirit. May they make the decision today to give their hearts, to surrender their hearts to you, Jesus. Because you love them. Because you love us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Powerful message. Speak the name of Jesus. The Lord himself, prior to his death, made a promise to us. He said, I, if I am lifted up, will draw all men unto me. What does that mean in 2024? If not, speak the name of Jesus. Paul shares with us. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. This is a blessing I'd like to bestow upon all who are within the hearing of my voice, whether it be in the house or whether it be online. Those attendees online, it is now time to bid you a fond adieu. Uh, we'll be signing off for the online audience. And uh, again, we welcome you back to Christ the Way next Sabbath, Lord willing, uh, for another worship experience. Now, folks, for those of us that are still here in the